In this video, you're going to learn how to work with parabolas by putting them into the standard form so that you can identify the vertex, the focus, the directrix, and get a nice sketch of your graph. So these are the two equations that we're going to be working with. And we're going to be talking about how to put it into that form so that we can get a, a nice sketch. Now, keep in mind, when you talk about a parabola, what a parabola is, it's the set of all points that are equidistant from a given point called the focus and a given line called the directrix. So, for example, if I had a point right here, the distance from that point to the focus would be the same distance as that uh, perpendicular distance to the directrix. And as you get further and further out on the parabola, the distance to the focus gets longer, but so does the distance to the directrix, but those two distances will always be the same. So that distance right here from the focus to the vertex, we call that distance P, and the distance from the vertex to the directrix, that's also equal to P. And you'll see that coming into play in both of these equations. So let's go through two examples. I'll show you how this works. The first thing we want to do is identify what type of form this is in. Is it a y squared type or an x squared type? Well, it looks like this is going to be like a y squared type. So this is the form that we're going to be trying to get it into. So let's get everything that has a y on the left side of the equation and everything that doesn't have a y, let's move it to the right. So we're going to add 4x to the right, subtract 29. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square. So we're going to take half of b and square it. So we take half of this coefficient, half of 10 is 5. And if we square that, 5 squared is 5 times 5, that's 25. If we add 25 to the left side of the equation, we want to add it to the right to keep it balanced, right? Now what we're going to do is we're just going to factor this left side. And the way this factors, it's going to be a perfect square, a binomial squared, and it's going to be y plus 5, the quantity squared. It'll always be half of this b value. If this was minus 10y, you'd see this is y minus 5. So that's kind of a quick shortcut. And you can always check your work if you write y plus 5 times y plus 5 and FOIL it out. You'll get back that original. Now over here, if we simplify, we get 4x negative 29 plus 5 is negative 4. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out this coefficient here in front of the x. So in this case, I'm going to factor out a 4. And that's going to leave us with x minus 1 on the right. And on the left, we have y plus 5, the quantity squared. Okay, so now we have it in this form, and we can identify the vertex. Now, what you want to be careful of is you want to make sure you take the x coordinate of the vertex as group with the x, so that's going to be positive 1, and the y coordinate of the vertex is group with the y, that's going to be negative 5. Also notice that the signs are flipped. So if this is negative 1, this is positive 1. If this is positive 5, this is negative 5. Just remember, x is with the x and the y is with the y. Now let's go ahead and graph this. So 1, negative 5 puts us right here. That's our vertex. And we have to kind of now identify, is the graph going to open up or down or right or left, right? And when it's a y squared type and this p value is positive, it opens to the right. If the p value is negative, it opens to the left. So the way we find p is we take this coefficient here, 4, and we set it equal to 4p. So let's do that. 4p equals 4. Divide both sides by 4. p equals 1. Notice it's positive, so our parabola is going to be opening to the right. So if I go one space to the right, that's our focus. And so that's going to be at 2, negative 5. And if we go 1 to the left, that's going to be our directrix. And that is the line x is equal to 0. x lines are vertical lines. So we can see that this distance from the vertex to the directrix and the vertex to the focus is the same. That's our p distance. That's 1 and 1 in this case. Now the other thing is that the parabola keeps getting wider as you, you know, go further and further out, right? But at the level of the focus, it's always going to be 4 times p wide. That's called a focal chord. And in this case, 4p is equal to 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that 4 in half. So I'm going to go up 2, and I'm going to go down 2. And that's just a way of getting a couple easy points to locate on your parabola. Of course, you can see it's getting wider, but this distance right here is 4p, which is 4. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Okay, let's try example number 2. If you're getting the hang of this, maybe you might want to try this one on your own, and then you can see as we go through it if you've got it right. So for number 2, it looks like, see, this is x squared, so it's going to be this type right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get everything that has an x on the left side of our equation, and everything else we're going to move to the right side. So I'm going to subtract 8y, 
and I'm going to subtract 40, so that becomes a negative 40. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square. So we take half of this coefficient, half the b value, and we square it. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is negative 4 times negative 4, which is a positive 16. If we add 16 to the left, we have to add 16 to the right to keep our equation balanced, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to factor this left side, and that's going to factor to x minus 4, the quantity squared. Remember, it's always half of this b value. If this is plus 8x, it would be plus 4. And then on the right side, let's simplify a little bit. We have negative 8y, and this is going to be minus 24. Now what we want to do is we want to factor out this coefficient in front of the y. So if we factor out a negative 8, that's going to leave us with y plus 3. And over here we have x minus 4, the quantity squared. Now it's in this form, and we can identify our vertex, which is the h comma k. Again, remember the one that's grouped with the x, that's going to be your x-coordinate of your vertex. And the one grouped with your y is going to be your y-coordinate of your vertex. But remember the signs are the opposite. See, x minus 4, it's positive 4. y plus 3, it's negative 3. So let's go ahead and graph that. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, negative 3, right about here. And now let's figure out, is it going to open up, down, left, or right? Well, first thing we want to do is we want to find our p-value. So we can see 4p is equal to negative 8. So if we set those equal to each other and divide by 4, p is equal to negative 2. But remember, when it's an x-squared type, it's either going to go up if p is positive, or it's going to open down like this if p is negative. So in this case, p is negative, so we know our parabola is going to be opening down. And if I go down 2 from this point, which is going to be right about here, okay, that's going to be our focus. That's our vertex. And if we go up 2, that's going to put us right here. That's our directrix. Remember, the distance from the vertex to the directrix is the same as the distance from the vertex to the focus. That's our p distance, which in this case was 2. And let's see, write our equation here. So our focus and our directrix. So our directrix is this horizontal line. That's the line y equals negative 1. Remember, horizontal lines are y equals lines. And then the focus is going to be here at, let's see, 4, negative 3. We went down, so it's 4, negative 5. And then remember, at the level of the focus, we said it's 4p wide. So in this case, 4p is equal to 8. So it's going to be 8 wide at the level of the focus. So I'm going to cut the 8 in half. I'm going to go 4 to the right, which is, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, right about here. I'm going to go 4 to the left, which is going to be right about here. And that kind of gives us an idea about how wide our parabola is at the level of the focus. So again, remember this distance right here is 4p. And we said that was 8. And I just cut it in half, 4 to the right, 4 to the left gives us a good sketch. So if you like the way that I'm explaining these conic sections, parabolas are part of conic sections, I'm going to put a video right there that goes more into depth into not just parabolas, but ellipses, hyperbolas, circles. So you're definitely going to want to learn more about these conics. Follow me over to that video there and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you in that video.